Senorita. Hey, hey. Wow, guys, look at this. Look at all the sanitizing stations. One, two, three, four. Social distancing is almost no more. We're Alex and Lindsay. We're two travelers who are exploring South America. Suddenly, a strict lockdown began in Peru, and we've been stuck ever since. Along the way, we took in a stray dog, and he hasn't left our side. It's been months, and we're still here. So we're documenting the whole experience and sharing it with you. As you guys can see, the social distancing is almost no more. But wait till we get a little further. Look at the mannequin with a mask. <laughs> Yeah. So everyone's gonna line up here to go through there. Oh, yeah. you walk to that side, I don't know why. Stupid. So look at this, you have to stand in this line to get into San Pedro Market and the whole area behind it. And you can see all these little tick marks here. Social distancing to each one of these. So they closed it off over here so that you have to go through here. But we want to get over there. All right, guys, we've made it indoors at the San Pedro Market. Look at all these people. And look what I just bought. So, guys, we're buying some Alta. <laughs> I need to move my hat. <laughs> So this is the San Pedro market. Look at everything they have. Wow guys, look at this. <laughs> Look at all the sanitizing stations at every every little spot. One, two, three, four, five, six, all down the whole way. People are selling masks, hand sanitizer, everything. Hey look, they sell kui. Roast guinea pig. Guys, this is so crazy. So guys, we're still in lockdown, still in quarantine, social distancing should be a thing, but look at this. It really isn't in some parts of Cusco. So this section is the meat department. There is meat hanging all around us on all sides. Okay. No social distancing at all. Look guys, this store has whips. <laughs> and we can't find clothing still. Look at the colors of some of these traditional clothing on Peruvian people. It's awesome. Alright, we're gonna go down this way this time. We're looking for some clothing. Out of all of these shops, there should be something open for clothing. See if we can sniff it out. This is an awesome fruit shop. 
So right now we're in the fruit section. So each part of this place, it kind of, it's in this grid of different sections. We were just in the meat, and now we're in the fruit looking for some palta. Palta. <laughs> Hello. Look, they put food and water here for the dogs. Wow, we found a secret mall here. So we're buying a blanket for Mr. Potato. We got a blanket for him. For like Once Sole. Do you like it, buddy? Oh. <laughs> Good boy. So look, they sprayed down your money with sanitizer before they give it to you. We got some pants, guys, so Alex doesn't have to wear my floral pants. <laughs> and we got a blanket for Mr. Potato Head, so it was a good day. So Lindsay's getting some pastries, it looks like. Apple pie. <laughs> I don't know if this is Peruvian or is it just like an apple pie? Oh, what is this? So the Peruvians here, what? What is this? Which one of these are good? <laughs> okay. You're a good boy. He's so happy right now. Looks like I got my people back and we got chicken. So, Lindsay just got a new mask. How do you like it? That's cute girl right there. You don't even need to show your face. <laughs> And Alex is gonna use my red one now. Yeah, it looks like you have panties on your face. Hey, <laughs> do I do? Okay, so we just left San Pedro Market and the whole area surrounding it. That was crazy. What did you think when you first saw it oh. a couple days ago? I was shocked by how many people there were. It was like another world compared to where we've been hanging out. Yeah because where we go, if we just enter like the main center, Plaza de Armas, nobody there and the cops, they blow a whistle at you and they're watching you. But here, we've never seen so many people, at least in two months. You want me to try to get some of you? Sure. So I was just about to say, I think things are, okay. Okay guys, I just got stopped by the police for having my phone out and I think Alex got stopped too. We're gonna wait right here for him. There he is! I heard him calling my name in the center plaza. And Your name? No, like <laughs> calling out to me like, Senorita, hey, hey. Like he didn't know how to say it in English. And I just kept walking because he wasn't saying it that loud, like it could have been anyone. Then all of a sudden I looked back, he followed me all the way up the hill. He kept trying to talk to me in Spanish. He's like, Spanish or English? I'm like, English. And he's like, oh. Because <laughs> he didn't know any. Yeah. And then he just asked for my passport. He said, I need original. I'm like, it's at my casa. Like, oh, okay. So it sounded like what he was saying to me is that he wanted to take me to the station because I only had a copy of my passport and not my actual passport uh, and he needed a photo or something but I didn't really understand him and I said I didn't understand and after a few minutes he just gave up and let us go. We've had our fill for the day. This has been pretty crazy day. We should stop walking through the center. It's on our way home but the cops were very very picky. Oh yeah, we've never had a cop actually follow us before like that. So after that long day, I think we're gonna stop the vlog here. So 
get ready for Q and A. All right, so now for the good part. We've been working on something special for you guys that we're really excited about. It's been fun to put together. So we've made some Mr. Potato Heads shirts. <laughs> Not just shirts, there are some mugs on there if you want a coffee mug. Totes. Uh, what else? Tote bags, uh, but mostly shirts. So iPhone cover for <laughs> one of the designs. Yeah, so I have the link below, and if you want to check out that stuff and get a Potato Head shirt, that would be awesome. Uh, we're gonna start wearing them once we can get them delivered here. So, check it out. Yeah. He's pretty cute. <laughs> All right, we're gonna jump into Q&A. So the first one is from Daniel Estrada. He says, nice Lindsay, good business. <laughs> what? Give <laughs> <laughs> Nice Lindsay. <laughs> the first one is from Daniel Estrada. He says, nice Lindsay, good business. Two for eight soles, I love it. So what he's referring to is the other day in our video, we bought two masks and originally it was gonna be two for 10 soles and I got them down to eight soles. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> so these are just some Peruvian masks we just got, we like them a lot. But three soles is equal to about a dollar here. So we feel really bad about bargaining when things are so cheap anyway. So after I bought these, <laughs> Alex said something to me about it. I decided that uh, we aren't gonna bargain for anything really, uh, especially at this time, like during lockdown, because it's been a hard time for everybody and a lot of these people haven't been able to work. And finally, they're able to work a little bit on the streets and yeah. also put themselves in a little <laughs> danger as well. So instead of bargaining things down, we're gonna try to actually give them a little extra. As long as it's reasonable, yeah. maybe we'll give them an extra one or two soles when we're gonna when we're buying avocado or or, or yeah. something like that. It's in my nature to always try to get the best deals, so I think that's what I was thinking when I was first buying the masks. Yeah. But then we felt kind of guilty about it. Instead of feeling good that we got them cheaper, we actually felt bad that we got them cheaper, so. It is kind of natural after you've been traveling for a little while because typically tourists do get ripped off. Uh, their price is gonna be twice as high for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So Lindsay was just doing what she's learned in her travels, which is normal, but at least for a little while, we'll try not to do that and try to help someone out. So we have a question from two different people that was the same question. So from Daniel Davids and Amaro Pargo, basically they're wondering, when we go back home, are we gonna go to Minnesota or California because we're from different states? So we're thinking once we go home, we will probably go between the two places. Maybe we'll start out in Minnesota. Or actually, I have a new niece, so we'll probably go to California first and visit there, visit my family and friends, and then go to Minnesota and visit Lindsay's family. So Most of our time back home will probably be spent together. I don't think either of us really wants to do long distance, so. Next one is from Home Dad. He says, being stuck where you are for so long, do you think when you are able to leave, will you want to go home to relax for a bit? So we've been on lockdown for a while now. We might be on lockdown in this one place for months, but our plan was to travel South America. So after being here for so long, there's really no point to be stuck here and not have gone home like we could have done. Uh, the main reason we're doing this is so that once the lockdown lifts, we will be able to travel at least a little bit. So it will cut it a lot shorter, but we're hoping to get to some places at least within Peru before we go home. Next one is from Kazi Cub. Says, when will you live stream again? So we're gonna be leaving this place pretty soon because of the circumstances. Uh, and our the Wi-Fi Wi is bad here. <laughs> yeah, if you joined our last live stream, it didn't go so well because the internet wasn't good enough. And then people have joined on, uh, more people have m moved in, so our Wi-Fi has gotten even worse. So we're gonna have to wait till we get to our new place and then hope that the Wi-Fi is good there, good enough to live stream with you guys. And so, then we'll likely live stream at the new place if it works because we really like doing that with you guys. Yeah, so hopefully in like a week. All right, the next one is from Jace Vibe, who says, are there any flights going back to America still and would you consider taking one if so? So there are some flights going back to the USA. However, they're leaving out of Lima, which is about 30 hours away from here. And we would have to hire private transportation and get a permit to go to Lima. 
So I think that'd be pretty expensive. Also, the flights to go home are not free. They are thousands of dollars. And I don't even think they're easy to get. You probably have to sign up for a wait list. And they're few and far between. Yeah. There are less and less all the time. So with it being expensive, hard to get, hard to get to Lima, it's just, yeah. we really don't know. We did think about it uh, because the lockdown was extended again, but we're probably going to wait this one out. And then if it gets extended again after these five weeks extra, then we will probably do whatever we can to find a flight home. Yeah, and there's been like 10,000 Americans that have gone back home. So I'm guessing there's a ton more left here too that still haven't gotten flights back. So who knows how many Americans are still here. All right, this next one is from PB who says, tell us what your daily schedule is like. What is your day to day? And we see some highlights in the videos, but we don't really see your routine every day. Yeah, we try not to show you guys the super boring stuff. <laughs> so basically we wake up, Alex has to have his coffee. So he has that in bed. I usually have some tea. After that, we get up and make breakfast and a smoothie. And then he works on editing. And we answer your comments. Mm -hmm. Usually while I have my coffee and Lindsay has a tea, we'll answer a bunch of your comments <laughs> in the morning. Yep, and then sometimes we'll FaceTime family. We'll take Potato Head for a walk and get outside or go grocery shopping and then watch some Lost and make dinner. And the other days that aren't like the ones that we just mentioned, it's when we go out, which is maybe every few days we go out to get food. And as you've seen in these videos, sometimes it's close, sometimes it's very far, and it takes hours and hours. <laughs> and yeah. we'll explore along the way back. Yep, so that pretty much sums up our day. We go to bed at like 9 to 10 p.m., which is like the earliest I've gone to bed in years. That's our lockdown. All right, so we're almost out of your coronavirus stories. So we've been using your 30 seconds to two minutes, your stories from what's happened to you, whether it be positive or negative. We just want your story. And we put those on the end of these videos. So we're almost out of them, so we need more. I have a Dropbox link below. So if you just go to that link, you can upload a video. You can film it with your phone, and it's super easy. So just let us know, and you can be in our next video. Send some, please. Hey, my name's Luke. I'm an Australian travel vlogger. I was in India when the whole corona situation was uh, becoming a thing. I was monitoring the situation throughout my whole time in India. I was there for two months, but specifically the last two weeks of my trip as I made my way to Delhi, I was monitoring the situation. Uh, every single day there were new like laws and new curfews coming out, and it got to the point where my Australian government, they actually sent me a message saying, get back home within the next few days or you probably won't be able to get home for a few months. So I tried to book the earliest flight I possibly could. So many things were sold out. There were flights that were way over $1,000, which is so expensive for uh, India to Australia. Uh, I only had one, there were only two airlines that I could fly with because Singapore and Malaysia were no longer letting uh, people transit through the international airport, even if you were having a layover. So I had to book through Thai Airways and go to Bangkok and then to Sydney. I, I, I luckily got one of the last seats on that flight and thankfully I made it home safe, but that was literally the last flight from India to Australia. So I was super lucky in getting back home and I know there's so many people that are stuck overseas right now and I really hope they can get back home as soon as possible, but I'm just so thankful that I'm here with my family here in, uh, in Sydney, in Australia, and um, I'm safe, you know, but seriously, I don't really see the next couple of months getting any better. I don't know when I'll be able to travel again. It's my job, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do over the next couple of months, but I hope everything like settles down and we can uh, tackle this, we can get over it, and uh, everyone can continue on with their lives in a few months. Also, the GoFundMe for Potato Head, you guys have been amazing. We are almost there. We, we might, I think we need like $50 to yeah. hit our mark, and then we have everything that we needed uh, for him and then to help any other stray animals with the uh, excess. So if you guys want to do that and finish it off for us, uh, <laughs> then the link is down below in the description and in the comments. Thank you very much for all your contributions so far. We really appreciate it. All right, guys, this is the end of the video. Please leave a like and a comment below. It helps us out a lot. And if you want more material like this, subscribe. And we will see you in the next video. Do you want postcards from around the world? Right now I am writing and drawing on postcards to my subscribers. 
If you want to join my Patreon, click the link below. You'll be supporting the channel and you'll be getting something pretty cool with a drawing from me. Hey, thanks for making it all the way through this video. If you want to watch more, click one of these videos. Subscribe because I'm traveling all around the world and I'm sharing the whole thing with you. Thanks.